But it all started for me when I was only seven years old. That is when my grandfather, Carl Walenda, probably the best known tightrope walker of modern times, put me on a wire for the very first time. And on that wire was not even this high off the ground, it was only about the height of a regular kitchen table. But he taught me the elementary skills of tightrope walking. Things like how to hold this balancing pole. Things like how to place my feet on the wire. But the most important thing that I learned from my grandfather about keeping my balance on the tightrope was that I needed to keep my eyes on a fixed and an unmoving point at the far end of the wire, which happens to be where this cable meets those two pipes at the far end. That is how I maintain my balance. I've been doing this for over 50 years now. And with that time and that experience, I do have the ability to look around, to talk to you face to face. But invariably, if this equipment is not as sturdy as I hope it is, or if I lose my balance for any reason whatsoever, my vision will instinctively and immediately return to that point at the far end of this wire so that I can regain my balance. Once this all becomes pretty much second nature to me, and what I mean by that is I can do it not in my sleep, but pretty much under any circumstances, then and only then did I take my first few steps on that tightrope. After that, you move up to some simple little feats, like what we would call a salute. Now, another simple little feat that we might learn very early on would be a knee-down salute. And then, after that, you'd learn to go to do a, a few things that are a little bit more up in scale. Things like possibly shifting directions. You know, though, I learned very early on that I couldn't pay my bills or support my family by simply walking back and forth on a tightrope and doing some simple salutes. So I really had to put myself into my craft to practice and rehearse countless hours so I could move up to doing some things much bigger, much better, things like standing on my head. Ouch. <laughs> the more time that goes by, the more stars I see doing that particular trick. <laughs> you know, it might interest you to know that my rehearsals from the age of seven until I was 12 or 13 is what it took until I could actually make my first few steps on a regular tightrope, which was 30, 35 feet in the air. And then my family made me wait another five years, till I was 17 or 18, before I actually became a member of the Wallenda Troop. But since that's been so long ago, I've discovered that every once in a while, I get out of breath, as you can probably hear at the moment. And when that happens, I find the best way to catch my breath is just to take a moment. So I'm going to place my trusty stool on the tightrope here. And once I get in position, I'm going to join you all and just kind of kick back and chill for a minute. <laughs> but while I'm chilling, let me tell you how that little lesson that my grandfather taught me so long ago has been invaluable to me. That lesson about focusing on an unmoving point on a goal in life. You see, as a tightrope walker, I've had innumerable upsets on the wire, times that I've fallen. Well, I found that, by the way, I've never fallen to the ground. I've always been able to catch myself. But even so, that wire is very hard and very unforgiving. And I find that one thing always holds true every time I've ever fallen. It always hurts. There's never been a time that it hasn't hurt. But my grandfather was a man of great integrity. My grandfather lived by that standard of the motto that you've often heard, 
that is the circus analogy, it just says that the show must go on. Now, to me as a performer, that's something that's a lot more significant than something I could just spit out of my mouth. No, you see, it goes down to my very heart and soul. It talks about life itself. Because in life, you discover that even though there's some things that I'd love to go back and redo, life doesn't afford me that privilege. Sometimes I just like for time to sit still and stop, and life won't do that either. Life just has a way of continuing on. And so when I've been hanging there in anguish and in pain and thinking, what do I do next? I'm sure you agree with me that the most foolish thing I could do would be just to open my fingers and let go. No, you see, the only way of life is to go forward. And so whenever I found myself in that kind of a situation, I realized that the only thing that I can do is get myself back up on that tightrope, get focused on that point, and continue on. Now that is a lesson for life itself because I found that if I'll focus in on a goal in my life, if I'll persevere, if I won't give up, if I'll be unrelenting, if I'll just hang in there, if I won't give up in the last moment. You know what I found? I found that I can accomplish absolutely the impossible in life. Now, you know, that's a lesson not just for me. That's a lesson for everybody. If you'll just focus in on a goal in life, if you'll persevere, if you don't give up, you can accomplish absolutely the impossible. And by the way, I need to tell you that my primary focus in life is Jesus Christ. Now, there's a verse in the Bible, Hebrews 12, 2. It says that we need to fix our eyes on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of our faith. You see, he wrote it. He's the author of it. But not only that, he also perfected it. He also lived it. <laughs>